we're back on the C20. This is gonna be a quick video. I'm hoping I can make this in one video. I don't wanna bore you guys. We're taking this motor, putting it in that truck, taking that motor out so it can be rebuilt at a later date. So I did some house cleaning before I started today. I put in a new counter so I can work on my engines um, and move some stuff around so I got a little more room. But enough with the nonsense. Let's get to it. Like I said, that motor is going in that truck. Um, I'm gonna start with the exhaust, rip apart the front accessories, rip apart the front accessories, put the motor in, put it all together and get it a, get it a good runner for now. Eventually I will put that motor that's in there now back in that truck, but So we got the motor out, um, I'm going to unbolt this motor, I got to do some things to disconnect it from the run stand, then I'm going to lift it out with the forklift and I'll put it in. Once I get it in a truck, we'll start putting everything back together and get her fired up. slack on a chain it's up against the dowels in the transmission I'm sure you guys can see that with that blue it's in the motor mount so we're home sweet now we got to get the forklift out of here get this thing pushed back on the lift and we can start assembling some parts in the back all right guys um so now that i got the motor in i'm gonna get it brought forward some more so i can get it put back together but i, I know this really doesn't mean a whole lot to you guys kind of does to me because I'm into the old nostalgia um, and a lot of this stuff is stronger than others based off a year um, but I was looking at this thing and I had just looked at a motor that a buddy had for sale to see if I was interested in a 350 um, so some key some key signs you can look at when you're looking at a 350 or an older small block Chevy one being right here if this pad is long like this it's an older motor, 76 or older. If it's short like this long right here, it's gonna be uh, 76 or newer. Um, these different symbols up here mean different things for the cylinder heads. Um, where, for example, where the timing cover, or where the timing tab is on the cover, this one is right on the top. 
you guys can see it right there. The balancer is big, um, which is usually a truck balancer, and they started that after 76. For example, over here is the motor that came out of that 76, which is a 76 motor. It's got the small balancer, timing tab off to the side, big pad, you know, um, this motor's got a big pad right here. And this motor has got the small pad. So I can tell you that came out of a 76 or newer big balancer tab on the top. Um, back here you can see, and I'll show you on this one. You can see where the casting number is. This is a 010, very common 350 number by the way. And you can also see it on the side of the block. Uh, where is it? Oh shoot, there's a spot on the block. Here's one, 010. It's upside down there, but yeah, 010. Um, there's another spot on the side, I thought. Anyway, um, looking at the motor that's in the C20 now, like I just showed you, it's got a bigger pad. So that means it's older than 76. Well, a little research later, this motor came out of 74 Chevelle. So to me, being that I like things original, this motor shouldn't be GM blue. So I'm kind of like doing this motor very wrong by painting it blue, but oh well, I guess the timing cover and the balancer, like I said, having the tabs being different, I don't know what that's about. Someone must've been in there to do a timing chain or maybe even a cam. Um, we'll find out if we get this thing together and it's got some snot or not. So. I'm going to keep working on this thing now and get it put back together. I'm going to touch up the blue so it looks a little better at least. Um, and yeah, sorry motor that you got to be blue. You're originally orange, but let's get to it and get this thing back together and see if we can get it running tonight. I, uh, so far is what I've got done. I just kind of been jumping, uh, jumping right into it. I got the bell housing bolts in. I attempted to fix a little transmission leak with a dipstick tube. Um, now I'm gonna do torque converter bolts, starter, starter wiring, and then I'm gonna throw in the header. So we're very close to firing this thing up. I'm going to uh, change the oil um, before I fire it up, but. Yeah, we're, we're very close. I got to change oil, put um, antifreeze in it, and then after that, we'll be good to go. So let's get her done. guys i got the headers in the spark plug wires spark plugs are in um everything should be set up for now got the antifreeze as full as possible put new oil in it um i'm just trying to figure out what i'm gonna do for a battery i threw the exhaust back on it for now too um i tried to fix that transmission leak hopefully it stops but um i'm gonna figure out what i'm gonna do for a battery and then when i get that figured out we'll start this thing up see how it runs should run just fine um I don't know what I'm gonna be really looking for, just making sure it runs good and everything, so. All right, I got the battery charger on it. Battery was dead, I stole a battery out of the LS truck, so I'm gonna fire it up now and see how it does.
something wrong with the carburetor, the accelerator pump, around the accelerator pump here, I'll show you, pardon the shaking of the camera. Around the accelerator pump, it's starting to bail fuel out of it and it's starting to load up. I don't know if the needle and seat are sticking again. This carburetor, I actually just had a buddy and I, we took them all apart and rebuilt them, so I might have to take it apart and see what's going on for sure. I think it's bailing over again. Crap, that sucks. Might have to try the other carburetor that we rebuilt. Hmm. It runs fine. The truck runs fine and everything. It's just that that carburetor's bailing over. Uh, what in the world? I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. It was coming out around the accelerator pump. But that means it was it was only doing that because the bowls were the bowls were filling up and it had nowhere else to go. So I don't know if the needle and seat back here aren't coming up like they should or what the heck the deal is. I'll let it sit a little bit and let the battery charge and I'll see what I can do. All right, so I fired it up another time. Um, it was doing the same thing. I kind of cleaned it out a little bit. Runs great. Uh, the motor, the truck, the, the whole nine yards runs pretty great. I see I got a little something leaking oh yeah i got some issues going on here it's leaking out of the bottom yeah this carb is definitely going over or bailing over i better put this rag there and soak that up before it swells them intake gaskets don't want it to swell them intake gaskets so they start leaking um this carb is definitely bailing over it looks like i'm gonna have to give the other carb a try now, the only stimulation with this carburetor is, you guys are going to probably call me nuts, but this carburetor is 100% fine, electric choke, everything's fine about it, except right here. So the vacuum booster port on the back of it broke. So we were having this issue with the carb. A little backstory, bought it at the Iola Car Show. Um, Carb was fine. Dad put it on one of his trucks, ran it, was fine. Next day he goes out there to start it, nothing. It's bailing over and just stumbling over, kind of like what this one is doing. Just runs terrible. Well, when I took it apart with my buddy and I, we found a bunch of dirt in the bowls. Okay, bunch of dirt, yada, yada. But if I don't ha have that brake booster port, which broke and cracked when my dad was taking it back apart, I don't know where I'm gonna run my vacuum brakes because on these GMs, they run off the back of the carburetor, that metal line coming up and over and into the booster, um, runs off the back of the carb there. I can, tee, I can tee it off into the intake manifold there, but you really don't wanna disturb that vacuum line running down to the shift modulator because a lot of times that will interfere with your um, shifting and your shift points and it'll make everything just kind of be weird so I don't know how much vacuum the front of the carb has that runs over to the um, crankcase excuse me crankcase ventilation but um, that's a spot a guy can try but I like I said I don't know how much vacuum that has if that pulls the right amount of vacuum so um, I'm gonna have to do some looking on that and see what I'm gonna have to come up with I know some guys do sell spacer plates that have the port in it which that would be great. Then I could just, you know, leave that one plugged and give it a try. Um, to, try to try out that carburetor, don't get me wrong, I can just throw it on there and try it out. But in order to run the truck, you know, traditionally and see how it does, that's what I'd have to do. So I'm gonna do some digging on the carburetor, but hey, that's not the issue. I know the truck runs good because when I clean out the carb, it runs beautiful. It sounds great. So going back to my thesis earlier that I talked about when I put this motor in, um, it has the different timing chain cover and a different harmonic balancer. So that means someone was in there. Now, when I was running this thing and kind of revving it up, I didn't really rev it up a whole lot when you guys were watching the first time, but it's snappy. It's snappy like someone put a cam in it. If I had to guess, they probably did what everyone typically does, and that's the Edelbrock Performer cam um, back in the day. Because this motor should not have that timing cover and balancer on it. I primarily think it has that on there because um, the previous owner of the truck I pulled this out of said he pulled this motor out of a 79 Blazer. 
and put it in a 79 truck. Well, that doesn't add up because the motor's out of a 74 Chevelle. So it made its way from the Chevelle probably to the Blazer, and then that's when I think it got the cover and the harmonic balancer because whoever swapped it probably thought that they needed that in order for the accessories to work in a truck. So um, that's why I think they did that, and I think they did a chain and a cam while they were in there. You'd be stupid not to. Um, nowadays with cheap cam parts and stuff like that, you'll end up with broken crappy lifters and wiped out cams but back then when you didn't have that issue it was no doubt you should have put a cam in you know if you wanted to wake up your motor a little bit but um and there could have been more done to it because like i said there was no height of hair orange these valve covers came from a different engine and i painted them so don't worry about the orange on there but there was no height and hair of orange on this thing when i cleaned it and painted it so who knows what it could have been from um i know it's from a chevelle obviously but who knows what they could have done to it so the motor runs fine i'm not worried about that that runs great i just got to finish the exhaust on this thing i have to f fix a little brake leak and then um i'll have to check the transmission fluid and figure out what's going on with the carburetor but motor runs fine that's just something i'm gonna have to tinker with off camera but other than that i'm gonna consider the orange truck done i just gotta do some tinkering here and there um i ripped the motor out of the run stand obviously that went in the orange truck so once I get the original motor from the orange truck rebuilt and figured out, that'll go in here. I won't make the mistake of not putting the engine in here first, breaking the cam. That's why I built this. So we'll put it in the run stand, breaking the cam there so we don't have any issues. And then hopefully that will eventually go back into the C20. Um, then we'll have another little motor project going on here later on in the future. But um, once that stuff is all taken care of, primarily the c20 uh we'll be able to get the ls truck up here in bay one and we'll be able to do the cam swap i got the cam over there on the bench and i got the torque converter for the turbo 400 transmission so yep we're gonna we're gonna be able to get that cam swap done i'm hoping i gotta have it done before spring uh, that's my goal i want to drive that this spring so that thing's gonna be a crazy setup when it gets done we're gonna do some trick stuff with the exhaust you guys will want to stay tuned for and don't forget when springtime rolls around we'll have the fire truck to work on that thing needs some stuff so that'll be kind of cool that one will get some trick exhaust stuff as well so stay tuned there's plenty more to come please like and subscribe if you haven't already hit the post notification bell so you can see every time i post a video keep the shiny side up and the greasy side down we'll see you in the next one